Okay, so <clears throat> what we are looking for now is uh, how to exploit more of the behavior of React components uh, so that we can find a way for them to execute also some extra functionality other than what we know to how to do, which is uh, basically uh, evolving the state and rendering from state and props. Hmm? Uh, we can have a, a better look uh, at the life cycle of, uh, of React components. Huh? Um, we all, we all, that we only needed uh, for up to now just in a very shallow way. No, now we need to understand a bit more. So uh, for every, comp every component has a very simple life cycle, uh, if you just take the, that specific component in isolation. Uh, the first time the component is created is uh, in, the, in the React jargon is mounted in the DOM. So there's a first uh, moment in which the component is created, is rendered, and the rendering, the result of the rendering is mounted, inserted into the DOM of the page. This only happens once per component. Well, per component instance, of course, you can have many components, each of them is mounted in individually. So mounting is like creating a new instance of a component. Then the component can be updated many, many times. Every time a prop changes, every time a state changes, the component is re-rendered. This means that uh, the function is, ex is executed again. Plus, React may decide to render the component even at other times if they want, okay? If the algorithm requires. For example, in development mode, every component is always rendered twice. The function is called twice and React will check if the outputs match are the same. Uh, so that they can warn you whether your behavior is not fully functional. And of course in production mode this doesn't happen, but in, uh, in uh, development mode it does. So it's under the number of updates. Uh, updates means uh, re-executing the function and redoing the render. And finally, the component uh, may disappear from the page, from the application. And this is called unmounting. So the component is destroyed okay, and it's removed from the DOM. And this only happens once. So the same component after unmounting can, unmounting cannot be remounted. So if you are remounting a component in the same place, it's a new one. Okay, there's no going back. There's not, uh, okay, it's unmounted by I'm parking it somewhere and, uh, and resume it later. No, React doesn't do this. So it's a new, create, update many times, uh, destroy once and for all, okay? So this is the life cycle component. What, what we can do is to uh, do some operations, some actions, additional actions, additional operations at some points in this life, in this life cycle. Huh? And uh, this picture, tells us how we can inject some type of operation in different points in the life cycle. So we have three columns that correspond to mounting, and we know it's only done once. Two, updating is done many times, and the mounting is only done once. Uh, and every time each of these operations have two separate phases, called the render phase, and the commit phase. The render phase uh, is uh, when we are executing the function and creating the return statement, creating the components, okay, rendering the component. This part of the, of the function execution must be pure functional, okay? So every time we, we start from the state, we start from a props, we compute local variables, and then we render a block of, uh, of components. Um, after that, so after the function returns, then React takes over, takes the results of this uh, render, and uh, modifies the DOM. But our function is no longer working. It's already finished, huh? the, our component function. And this is the commit phase, where the result of a render is uh, integrated in the real web page. 
This is not under our control, no? it's under React control. What can we do with hooks? With hooks, we can modify or add some behavior at a specific points in time. For example, use state or use context, let me access some information that can modify the uh, render phase or can modify the, uh, the let's say basically it can schedule a new, a new rendering. So all the state uh, hooks uh, happen during the render phase. And that is why we need to have this strong discipline about uh, changing the state. I can never change the state in this execution, I can always only change the state for the next execution because it must be functional, so it cannot have any side effect. Inside an executional function, I cannot change any variable, except the local ones that get destroyed. And so, I must have no side effects. This is the key word here. But in the commit phase, it's possible to have side effects, because we are no longer in the execution function and uh, they are allowed here. And so there are hooks uh, that lets, lets us define some operations to do during the commit phase. And this operation can do side effects. And by side effects, I mean everything that goes outside the single component. It may also be outside the React application. For example, it may be go to the server and exchange information. Everything that is outside the, the rendering, the pure functional rendering, we call it the side effect. It will turn, change, or change or exchange information with the outside of the component. And we have a special hook called use effect, which is for doing side effects, not special effects like in movie, unfortunately. Only side effects like in not functional behavior. So it's a strange name, use effect. But just so you remember is for, okay, I'm defining a side effect for this component uh, to be executed according to a different set of rules, uh, which are not the rules of rendering, the pure functional rules of rendering. So we are escaping from, from the, the basic uh, uh, behavior. So what are side effects? Side effects are anything that can be, that affects uh, or is affected by something outside the scope of the function. So data fetching reading the list of questions from the API server is definitely a side effect. Something that happens outside the component uh, whose results should be used by the component. Uh, logging something. The, the very simple console.log st statement is a side effect because it doesn't affect the rendering, it affects something outside. We are using them normally, but we shouldn't, you know, theoretically, okay? in, the, render, in the, um, the rendering phase of the component during the function. And um, just remember that we actually are giving a, a component two different sides from now on. One is the normal rendering phase that we are still, we still want to be pure, we should need to be pure, so props, state, rendering, that's it. If you want to change the state, Schedule it for later. That's it, that, it doesn't change. We are adding a new set of logics to be executed the, by the component under the, the use effect hook. Use effect does not affect the rendering, cannot affect the rendering because, remember the diagram, it happens later. What it can do it is it can affect the future state and then trigger a new rendering and so on. But it's separate, okay, let's not mix them. And not don't do any side and don't try to do any side effect from within the component. They won't work. Um, okay, this is just repeating that we don't want any side effect in the render phase, but they can do, they can be done in the commit phase. Okay. So let's go to our new friend, Mr. Use Effect. Um, For example, let's take a very stupid side effect, console.log. Okay? In theory, we shouldn't do it in theory because for debugging everything is good, okay? But 
Theoretically, it's a side effect. So it should not be done inside the render phase. What we could do is to put it, or to declare it as a side effect by defining uh, the code to be executed inside a user effect. User effect uh, mm, is a hook, of course, uh, function, that takes uh, one callback, and this callback function is executed in the commit phase. And then inside here, inside the body of this callback function, the callback doesn't have any parameter, but in, since we are defining it here through closure, it can access every, all the state and all the props uh, if it wants. And uh, uh, we can have any code here that is run after the rendering, so it will not affect the rendering, but it can do something else. In this case, the console log is here. Then the question is, when is this code uh, actually run? Um, because does it run only at the mounting of the component, at the amounting, at every update, only on some updates? We need, since the updates are not under our control and side effects can do something, maybe, no, it can change data on the server, we need to be able to control when the callback is executed. And this can be done through the second parameter of user effect, which is an array of dependencies that uh, it can be configured to specify when the callback needs to be called. And then we see all the uh, possibilities. Uh, what I, uh, we call the uh, user effect uh, a component and uh, a function with a very dense API. So it only has two parameters. Mm. And, but especially the second one has many special cases to, to unravel. Okay? So we need to, to see it carefully. So basically, user effect is a hook. First parameter is a callback. The second parameter is an array of dependencies. The model is easy. What to execute? The callback. When to execute it? The dependencies. Um, the callback logic doesn't have any constraint. It's free code. No, it's free from the constraint of uh, being pure function, being functional, you can do whatever you want into this code, okay? Uh, the only problem is that you cannot affect, affect in any way the current rendering because it already happened. You can only maybe change something for the future, like changing a state, for example. The dependencies is an array. It's an optional array dependency, so the behavior of user effect is different uh, depending on whether this array is specified or not, and of course on its contents. The rule is that uh, the callback is executed if at least one of the dependencies have changed between the renderings. So the idea is that the component is rendered many times, at mounting and at updating time, not during the mount. At each of these times we are rendering, and after the rendering, we are checking whether the value of all the variables listed in this array changed or not with respect to the past. If the value changed, or if the value of at least one of these variables listed here changed, then we execute the callback. If all the dependencies didn't change, then we don't execute the callback. So the, if the values of all dependencies is the same as before, as the previous render, we don't execute the callback. This means that the more dependencies we have, the more frequently we will execute the callback, because it will depend on many more factors, external factors. If we don't have any dependencies, in the limit case, we only run the callback once at mounting time. And then it will never be called again because there's no dependency that changed because I didn't delete any dependency. So it's a shortcut for running it only once at mount time. Or uh, if we don't list the dependencies, so if you omit the parameter, then 
there's nothing to compare with, and so the callback is executed always. Hmm? So there are three cases for the second uh, parameter, for the dependency array. The first case, I don't provide the parameter, undefined. It's not there. Then the side effect will always run after every render. not very useful in many cases depends on what you want to do but after every time the component is rendered you run this call the callback or second case an empty array which is totally different from not providing anything an empty array means uh, there are no dependencies so I run this code only once at mount time and one time the code is always run because the first time any variable is new, so it's not equal to the previous one. There's no previous render. So with an empty array, the side effect, the callback, runs only once. And remember, the component is mounted only once. So even if it disappears and reappears again, it will be rerun when it reappears, because it's mounted a new time. But after being mounted, until it disappears, it will not be remounted in some way. There's no remounting. And so we'll only run, be run one. It is good for a component to maybe load some data when it first displayed. Load the data that it needs when it's displayed. Or the normal case is a dependency array with many variables that can be props, can be state variables, can be local variables that have been computed from props and states. The body of the callback is a side effect. But the callback call itself is in the body of the function. So the variable accessible here are only the ones that we can define in the functional world props, states, or local variables computed from, from props or from state. We are, we are getting used to that, to the limitation, or context, uh, or uh, the route, uh, which are forms different ways of storing the state, okay? Context and routes, uh, route parameters are also, uh, are, they are a form of state, after all. So that's why I listed here only prop and state, or co values computed from those. And they are just checked for value changes or from object changes. So if, it, if it's a simple value, it's compared by value. Three is compared with three. If it's an object or an array, it's compared by reference. Okay, so if I'm creating a new array with the same contents, it will count as a new, as different. It will not compare for efficiency reasons. If you have a complex array or a complex, uh, an array or an object which are complex data structures, I'm not recursively checking all the comparisons. I'm just checking the refer reference, okay? So imagine doing a, an equal comparison between two objects. Uh, if the objects contain just primitive values, it's the values that are compared. If the objects are contain structured values, then the reference is compared. Hmm? And we must remember this later on. So today we'll just... Uh, uh, see the simplest case, simplest use cases of user effect, uh, and last week, uh, uh, because it's very, it's, it's, co it's complex, okay, it says a lot of, uh, okay, these are just code examples that don't say anything more than what we already just said. Here I don't have the second uh, parameter. Here I have one second parameter with an empty array, or with uh, some properties, and or some state variables. Hmm? Okay. Um, so this is an example of code just may help us to um, understand the behavior. Uh, imagine we have a component which is called clear count uh, and a button, the count it takes a property, a prop called number, okay? And uh, uh, there's a button that will increase uh, the value of this number. So the idea is every time I click the button, I increase the number. So I count how many times uh, this button has been clicked. And uh, 
And this, okay, it's a normal behavior we already did at, at the very beginning. And we are trying to, to print, to log uh, the behavior of these values. I have two user effects with a console.log. And the first one doesn't have any dependencies. The second one has a number of dependencies. Number is a prop. So prop.number. So what happens is that uh, the first uh, my static number is, uh, is only printed once. With the initial value of the number at the time where the count component was mounted, or first mounted on the page. And then you see that uh, it doesn't, this message is not printed anymore. On the other hand, uh, every time that I click on the button, the number state is changing, and so the number prop of count is changing. It will compare prop to number with the, the increased version with the previous one. It would be different. So um, the actual order is prop the number changes. So the component is rendered. So it returns this one. Then it will check all the effects, uh, whether any of them have a dependency on the props number we change. This one doesn't have any dependency on number, okay, so we don't execute it. This one does have a dependency on number, and so we execute this. Every time number changes, we print it. And if by chance uh, the, the new number is equal to the previous one, it will not be executed. Okay? So normally, if we have something that depends on some parameters, uh, uh, it should be recomputed in some way. Okay? If in the body of the, of, of the callback we are using some value, it's reasonable that if the ch value change, the operation should be refreshed, re-executed. Uh, and uh, the state and the side effects are strongly linked together because a state variable is an interesting dependency for an effect. A user effect normally uses inside the body of the function states or properties to know what it's doing. Uh, and so it's a normally frequent, uh, let's say, that uh, state variables are a dependency of side effects. But at the same time, inside the side effect, we can change the state. Well, we can ask to change the state asynchronously. We can call a set state function inside of, it's normal. It's a normal way in which a side effect can communicate to the component, can inform the component about the, maybe the new data they loaded. And so after Imagine the sequence, I'm changing a, probe, uh, a state, state changes for some reason. Maybe user click on something, uh, call back, set state. After the set state, this component is re-rendered, and uh, it triggers a side effect because the state has changed. Inside the side effect, there may be some loading or something else, and inside the side effect, I can ask for another state change, maybe, or a different state variable. And after this change, the component is rendered again a second time because the state has been changed by a side effect, hmm? and so on. It's the same mechanism of uh, re-rendering after state changes or re-rendering after prop changes. Right now, we have one more source of state changes, not just callbacks, also side effects. Um, well, let's... Uh, this. From, the, from now on, we are a set of special cases that I want to study only after we, we solve the, the, the easy cases, okay? So let's go to the code and start to see, let me do an operation that I've been longing for several weeks. One, two, three, go away. Let's remove the fake data. Of course, nothing is working anymore because there's a lot of variables that uh, 
let's start uh, rebuilding our application in small pieces, okay? Uh, our new mindset is that the state of the application is no longer inside the application. The real state uh, is in the server, is in the API server. Where is the real list of questions? In the database. Where is the real score of, the, of a given answer? In the database. So the front-end application will load from the database uh, information when it needs it for rendering. But it doesn't own the data. So in a way, it becomes simpler. Because the real source of, of truth is the server, is the database. And every time I need to know this truth, this, this information, I just ask the database. I do a fetch. Fetch is a side effect. So it must be done inside a use effect call. Or inside an asynchronous operation, for example, a callback. So imagine, let's forget about answers. Let's delete everything. For the moment we always have the previous version of the project okay and uh, we have one start from this question list the first page okay of our application a list of questions the component question list just wants uh, to have a list of questions and then it does all its rendering okay um, the list of questions is a state variable. But since we don't have any information right now about, we don't have the fake questions, at the initial time, we can only initialize this list with an empty value. And when this component app is mounted, it should load the real list of questions from the server. I can't write here fetch. I can't write it in the code. It's not functional code. And in any time, in any case, the result of this fetch will not be available for this rendering because it's asynchronous. So the rendering is synchronous, and then the result of the fetch will give me a promise when the render is already, or is already gone. I must put a fetch inside a user effect. Say, okay, when I mount in the component for the first time, remember to, when you write is affected to, uh, write that, to import it also, like you state. Uh, we want to execute some code for loading the list of, of questions at mount time when I open the app, the app is, a, is the first component that is only created once uh, at the beginning. At the beginning, we'll read the list of questions. And so we should here load the list of questions from the API server. So const uh, list uh, equal to something, sorry, and then set state, set questions, list. So I'm doing something which is a side effect, I'm doing a fetch here, and the result of the fetch is used to update the state. So I am updated the state with the real updated list that I just downloaded from the server, and uh, normally the new state will be applied uh, here instead of the empty state and the component uh, question list will be rendered again with a new version and everything will be nice. So here I should write the fetch. I don't like uh, writing the fetch directly inside the component, okay? I prefer having a separate file with all the fetches. 
even because the same type of fetch uh, can be used by many components depending on their needs so it's better to separate uh, having a sort of we have a, a server API we define the API in the server okay so let's make a mirror a front-end for those API's in the client in the client let me call a new file API we define many functions corresponding to all the APIs that are implemented in the server. So for example, in the server, we had, uh, let's open the server, uh, pa, 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 pa. server, read me, our design document, we have get a list of all questions, this one, okay? It's an API that we implemented in the server. To call this API on the client, we implement a function that, how, how can we call it, uh, get a list of the questions, list questions. That doesn't require any parameters, and it does the fetch. Of course, since it does the fetch, it must be an asynchronous question, an asynchronous function. It returns a promise, it doesn't return the list, of course. Sorry, a sync function. It must come before. Okay. And so, what does it do? Well, we we already have it in our simple client. We wrote a fetch. Well, so let's steal it from the simple client. From script, we add this code. Well, sort of. So I take this code and put it here. I copy, paste, okay. Um, of course, uh, I don't have any, in, any result, uh, any component on the page, so result is not here. So that we need to adapt it because we don't need to modify the page. We only need to return a result, okay? It's just a function. Maybe we can do some uh, API URL since we are repeating it. Maybe this part which we stored in a constant. Something like that. So we have this function list question that uh, um, makes the fetch call for slash questions. If everything is okay, it extracts the, the questions response and then returns it. This is the object that is being reconstructed by the server. It's not exactly as before. Before we have a list of uh, question objects. They were created with new object, with new question. Right now we have just a list of plain objects because they are being reconstructed from the JSON. In a moment we can see if what to do, what we can do if we want to recreate the objects. Otherwise uh, we can return uh, the response is not okay, so we can uh, generate an exception maybe. So throw new error with uh, the message that can be uh, response, uh, sorry. I can extract the body, so const message from await response.txt and I generate an exception with the, this message. Otherwise, I can generate an exception with a network error message. And then I can have a error dot message. That is the message inside the error object generated by fetch. 
and here is the message in the body of the response. So application error. Something like that. So as always, <coughs> we have two lines of actual code, fetch, JSON, and return, and all the rest for error handling. And so this question, so it's a function that will asynchronously call the API server on this address and return a promise with the, the list of questions. And so we export this method, list questions. And since we have defined this, we can use it inside uh, this user effect method. So here we can call list uh, questions by importing it from API. Uh, when I wrote it, I imported it. The, the, And then it returns a promise. And so in the then of this promise, I can call the set questions. So then it returns a list. And after I have a list, I can use it to schedule a state change. Something like that. So uh, let's check the parentheses. List. Okay, list questions. The then I need a closing. Okay, the closing parentheses of the then is here. Okay, this is the closing brace of the callback. Good. And this is the closing parentheses of the user. This question returns a promise. When the promise is resolved, uh, say in a positive way, I get the list. I use the list to update the state. Set questions. And the new state uh, will hopefully re render this one. Let's try it. Um, just one point. I used then instead of await. I will explain in a moment why, okay? It's not the same here. Uh, basically, the rule is that this callback cannot be a sync. I'll tell you in a moment why. But if we are using, uh, we don't need a sync we are, if we are using just the old DEM method. Uh, before running it, uh, we have a lot of error here because uh, answers are not, uh, I delete a lot of stuff, so Let's me remove all the reference to the variables or functions that are no longer there, okay? Okay. So this more or less should work if I don't uh, uh, navigate outside the question list. Let's, let's check it. Right, the browser. Right, so wait, it's working. We have a list of questions here. Uh, let's see in the network panel. Okay, we have a lot of loading to do, but it's normal when the application starts. But uh, have a look here. There's a fetch here. Get questions issued by fetch in the API.js file. So after mounting of the component and so on, this patch is executed. Uh, it's executed twice just because uh, of the development modding React uh, that executes everything twice to check the result. Okay, but in uh, in uh, in development mode uh, it, it will not happen. In sorry, in the production mode it will not happen. 
the question response of, of course contains the JSON that we created before okay that we already saw now this JSON has been captured by the asynchronous side effects and uh, uh, used for updating the state We don't see it, but this page has two renders. The first time it will render with an empty list, and then the state updates, and we render with a second list. So for example, uh, what happens is if maybe this list question method is much slower. It will happen that you see the empty page and then after a while you see something displaying. Um, let's make an example here. This return question, now it's immediate, we can delay it, for example, just uh, for checking what happens. So let's put a timeout uh, with uh, with a callback that calls uh, return questions uh, of maybe one second. Just to see what happens, okay? And so if I reload the application, no, sorry, I have properties questions in define. Well, in question list, uh, what, did they do, what did they do wrong? Question is not undefined. It should be. Uh, wait, okay. Mm. Return, I'm returning undefined for some reason. So there's something. Because if I don't do this, the page loads with an empty. So for some reason, list is undefined. I'm returning something wrong from the oh yes sorry well, it's, uh... no because the, the sorry I cannot do this in the way because this function is returning of course right away I cannot delay delay the return so I okay let's make it in, a, in the other place uh, now what what happened was that uh, the set timeout is executed and then the function hits the closing brace here and returns an undefined value. And later on this code will return but when the function is no longer available. So uh, the, the value that is, get, is extracted here will be an undefined value. So okay, I cannot see it here, okay. Uh, but you, you can imagine there is uh, one first uh, rendering which is like this empty and then after a while after the callback has gone through then it will appear so maybe what you want to do is to uh, show that something is loading for example huh? show that uh, a slow call is being executed because in this case well just it's empty but sometimes maybe it's a part of the page which is missing and so if you want to show maybe an icon, a loading icon or a loading message or something like that. And it's easy to do. Because you could uh, avoid rendering this one until the question list uh, is filled. Or you could have an extra state that tells me whether something is loading or not. 
No? Imagine you have something like uh, a state. that remembers if the application is still loading. And uh, then when you set question the list, you also set loading to false. Now I've loaded it. And then the render of this component can be conditional upon loading. So if I'm still loading, I display something. Otherwise, I display the component itself. Or maybe loading becomes a prop so that the component inside can do something different. It depends, okay? So we can have this extra information because the state uh, no, of the component does not, yes, it depends on the props and the state. But the state may change by itself because of side effects, because something that is happening asynchronously. Okay, so for, for this case, with we don't modify it yet, uh, but the idea is that we can have uh, some extra flags uh, to track the evolution of, of the asynchronous operations. And remember, everything should be dying, done by state variables, which are the only one that survive the different renders of the function. This is only executed once. Well, in this case, even if we are changing some state or we are the app doesn't have any props, so it wouldn't make uh, much of a difference. Okay, let's move to another component, the list of answers. Uh, here, if I click here, I should have the list of answers to this question. So, how can I implement this functionality? One possibility is to go into the question list and say, okay, when the user clicks here on this link below, we call a callback that will load the data and set the state in app. In app, we don't have the state of the answers anymore should have a new answer and then a set uh, callback that should be passed down to the component. And when the user clicks on the button, it will trigger the loading and in parallel will navigate to the new page and update the state. It can be done because, and it say, it's easy for us to understand because when I click here, I load the, the answers. Actually, it's not the best way in React. The best way is to let uh, the answer list component load what it needs by itself. So in the question list, I just navigate to this page. This page needs some information. By the way, this information is dependent on the question that has been clicked on. So I can't imagine of loading all the answers in advance, uh, in app. Well, when I need to show the list of answers, that component will ask for the information it needs. And so it can update it as it wants, as it wants. Hmm? So, and it has all the information to recreate it because the only information is basically the ID and in passing the ID into the, in the route and maybe other information like the questions in the props. So in a way, I make it simpler. It's no longer responsibility of app to handle all the information of all the state. Because, because the state is no, no, is no longer in, in the real state is no longer in app, it's in the server. So the component only asks from the server and use that little portion of, of state that they need. Before, we didn't have any, any, anywhere to store the, 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 the real information, so we had to store everything in the in app, right? in the main component. Not any longer. So if we go to answer list, answer list already extract 
the uh, ID of the question from the parameters. And here is doing some, uh, some wrong stuff, basically, to extract uh, the answers from a global list of answers. This is a trick that we had to do last time. Okay, we don't need it anymore. Of course, we need to extract information about the questions. I have a prop with all the questions. I have a, a parameter, a route parameter, with the idea of the question that they want to display. And so I filter the list for extracting information about the question. This is for the header of the page. This is the question, and then below we have the answers. I'm using the list of questions as a prop. I already have it. It's managed by app. And the list of uh, uh, the specific idea of the question, which is a prop. This is a navigation parameter, so it's a URL parameter. And, uh, okay, we have some methods. And basically, we have the rendering. Basically, for the rendering, we need to have uh, here my answers, like so, sort of a list of answers. Let's put, let's call them answers. So here, we need to uh, load the list of answers to these specific questions from the server. We do have an API for doing that on the server. We need to have a front end for that API here. So we can, it's a very similar to list questions. It will be list answers. With one parameter, which is the answer, question ID. We have no API for listing all the answers in database, only the answers relevant to a specific uh, uh, question. That's our design decision. So I give you a question ID and I extract the questions. Uh, I need to have a, a template string, not a normal string, because we have parameters. Question slash question ID slash answers. This is the URL for this API. Give me the list, get the list of answers for a specific question. And then we have answers and return answers. And the rest is more or less identical. We export. And then we can use this API in a side effect of the loading of the component, of the answer list component. So we create some state, const uh, answers, Use, uh, set answers as a new state. Remember to give always some meaningful state, so don't leave it undefined ever. Okay, because otherwise the, the component below is trying to render the table will crash with undefined. Hmm? It's better to give it something which is also possible. That question doesn't have any specific answer. Hmm? So it's something that can be rendered. It's not a, an error condition. I don't know which is list, the actual list yet. And I'm loading that asynchronously. So use effect. And the user effect callback will call the API and will run for the moment at the component rendering time. For the moment. Okay? What do we do? We call the API. So list answers. With a parameter which is the ID of the question. I can use this parameter because it's part of the of the, the closure, okay, of this function. And then, when I have this data, the list, I can easily set answers to this list. Same game as before. If 
if I save it, now I'm going to details. Details will navigate to a different page. That page will pass through up to the router, render list of answers with that parameter, and it crashes. OK? But it's an easy crash. Date.format is not a function. So this means that I already have something. But uh, uh, the date field is not DJS, a DJS object uh, as it should be, but it's a normal string. This is because we reconstructed the object from JSON, and so we lost any object identity or specific object. So if we really need objects, what we can do in the API is instead of returning a list of raw objects, let's return a list of uh, real objects, no? according to our. So maybe we just uh, replay, uh, do a map. No? We are mapping the answer to a new answer. And now it becomes boring because you have uh, to specify answer is imported from QA. You have to specify all the, all the values. So uh, the ID is, mm, uh, and define, I, I don't know, uh, it's a.id. Uh, the text is a.text. The author is a.author. The score is a.score. I'm extracting the fields from the raw object and then using them as parameters for the constructor of a real answer object. And also date. It may work. Let's see. Props of question defined in answer list. Props of question in answer list. Prop questions. Questions is here. In app. Question of questions. Why are you undefined? Um, so that okay, sorry, I didn't go through the home page, so I didn't load the, I, I didn't load the, the list of questions. So if I started from the beginning of the application, we have, there's a first load of questions, then I navigate to one detail page, and this detail page calls get answers in a synchronous way and populate the answers state. Now all the buttons are not working, but close should be working because it's just a navigation. Navigate back. And here, if I go to another answer, the URL is different, so the param is different, the question ID is different, the component is re-rendered with a new and of course, it will ask a new answer. And there are also questions with no answer, probably, yes. And so, right now, I have only these two functionality working. Component that loss information when it needs it. Um, coming to this user effect, uh, I said initially, let's leave this empty. We can only run it once. Actually, inside, uh, sorry, not tap, answer list, this one. Inside uh, this user effect, uh, I'm using one parameter, ID question. And extracting the list of answers for this specific question. So, what happens if this ID question changes. Can it change? Yes, the router can change the route. And if for some reason the route changes, and it only changes some route parameter, the component is not recreated. It's just modified. That parameter is updated. 
like uh, using a prop. If I add, uh, not in this case, prop.question is a prop, may change any time. So in this list of uh, dependencies, I should list all the values that may change and that affect the result of my callback. In this case, the question does, don't affect anything. If one changes the list of questions, I don't care. I, the only thing I need is ID question. But ID question is actually something I care about. So after you write a callback, you should have a look at the code you wrote and say, which are the variables that you use inside? Can these variables change? Normally, yes. And so if they change, I want to refresh the list of answers in this case, if the idea of the question changes for some reason. Right now, in playing with this component, we didn't uh, notice that this was a mistake before. There's a uh, use effect that doesn't list all the real dependencies before. Now it does. We didn't see any problem because the only navigation way was uh, destroying and recreating the component. For changing the question, I had to navigate somewhere else. And so the component was recreated and the list was reloaded. But if we had, for example, I don't know, previous and next, two buttons for navigating the different question in the answer page, that will only navigate uh, by changing one parameter, and we would have shown that clicking on next uh, would not change the information about the answers because it would not re-trigger the, uh, the event. So for us, the rule is, if an, an event contains or depends or uses some values from its environment, from its closure, then put those variables in the list, in the dependency list. Uh, theoretically, also list answers is a dependency because it's a variable from outside that I'm using inside the user effect. We know that this answer is a function which is not likely to change during the execution of the application. So we can list it or not. There's some code checker that are telling you, oh, you're using this variable list answers, which is not listed there. Of course, of course, it's a function. It's not changing. But JavaScript doesn't know that. It's even possible that we are changing the implementation of this at runtime. We are not doing that. It would be stupid to do that. But from the point of view of the code, there are one and two uh, dependencies. We, are, we know for sure that the first one will never change, and so we don't bother listing the dependency. So we are really should go function by function, method by method, variable by variable, that are used inside the callback as, as a closure from their environment, and list them here, unless we are totally sure they will never change. But if they are state, if they are params, if they are context, if they are props, they may change. And so they must be listed. Okay? Um, it's a frequent uh, error mistake uh, to forget about some dependencies. Usually what you do is to write the first version of the dependency, uh, of the callback, at least the dependency, and it's fine. And then you need more. And so you add more instructions here, and you forget to update the list. And uh, uh, for example, no, not here. Even the set answers, again, is a function that should change, but it will not in this case, okay, because it's a state. So in this case, it's really only the, these ones. Even if there are some code checkers that warn you about uh, functions not being listed. Uh, See, so it's very, like I said, it's a dense API. So it's a, every detail counts uh, and will change the behavior of, uh, of this uh, effect. Um, OK, is there any? OK, we can maybe, uh, yeah, we can, we can try to implement one extra functionality. The easiest one, delete. Why not? Okay. So uh, deleting is easy 
because it doesn't imply any navigation if I remember correctly because I have you have, you have all the handle buttons uh, handle delete handle vote and so on what they do basically is to navigate so handle close works uh, handle add uh, will just navigate so it's a problem of the other page uh, to implement uh, but delete uh, is something that we implement uh, delete answer from the father but we don't have it in the father anymore so we can do it here handle delete initially was calling you know, a function for the father because the state was there now the state of the answer is not there we have it here so we can do it so let's implement delete of course we are not deleting anything from the state we are implementing the uh, API async function delete answer with one parameter which is the answer ID and uh, again we copy this block of stuff here but now the uh, fetch is more complex because it's a delete it's no longer a get so we need to provide an error object uh, sorry a body object a request object the URL is uh, uh, simply answers answer ID Is it? Yes. Delete answers ID, which is this parameter. But then we need to specify that it's not a get. So we provide a second parameter as an object. Uh, remember, the three main characteristics are the main properties of the objects are method, uh, headers, and uh, uh, body. We don't need to provide any body, any space body. Um, and so we don't even need to specify the content type so the only parameter we need to specify is the method to be delete so this fetch will issue a delete instead of a get and of course it will not give me any response there's no JSON response so uh, there's no answer to map and so I just have to resolve this promise with a maybe uh, you know true just to return something otherwise of course I can have the text uh, the error and the other message and so on I'm not expecting any response. So the only check I do is the reference, if the call went okay without any error, if so, let's proceed. Let's resolve this promise. Uh, delete answer should be exported. And so we can go to the answer list and call this API. Delete answer from the API with this ID. I'm calling an asynchronous function, the API, from an event handler. It's okay. The event handlers run in the commit phase after the DOM has been modified. So I can call API methods from normal event handlers or from effects. Um, and so it should work I don't know let's check so I let's reload the application just to be safe first question click on delete of the second one okay delete the delete went through it has been deleted but it doesn't disappear why doesn't it disappear because the database has been modified but the local state of this component hasn't if I go back and re-enter the question, I see that it went away. So, there's a big issue of how to synchronize the real state with the local state. Whenever I modify something locally, 
when I modify something, sorry, I need to, for sure, to modify the server where there is the real state, the real truth. But also to ensure that our front end is synchronized with the state of the server. We can do that in, se in several ways. Okay, it's a longer discussion that we can do today. It's one of the points that we want to explore uh, next week uh, of the advanced usage of, of effects uh, and, uh, and remote states. I, here, I really deleted the, the answer. What I could do here is to reload the list of answers from the server. So here, what I could do is this. Okay, I delete it, and then I reload it. I refresh it. Uh, it's not ID question, but it's just ID. I'm calling two APIs in a row. Yeah? Uh, is it possible to call the second API inside the, the first one? It must be. This is wrong. Maybe you notice it. Because these are two promises. There's no guarantee that this get happens after the delete. So what we are risking is to reload the list of answers before the delete has been executed. So we must, in this case, put this second in the then of the first one. Only after the delete is completed, then I reload it. Or I create another API with the two, but the idea is that we need to chain them with an await or with a then. This uh, is an event ender, so I can make it asynchronous. But let's try it like this. It depends, okay? It's a right condition. I don't know what happens. Uh, um, okay, there's some parentheses wrong here. Okay, that seems, okay. Never mind. I'm, um, it's a longer, it's a longer topic for, uh, I forgot a brace also. Yeah, right. I forgot a lot of stuff here. Never mind. It was just the idea. Uh, one possibility is uh, reload, uh, but we, not, we, we must reload it correctly. The second possibility is to replicate. We can delete from the server and from the local state. So we don't have to wait for a full reload. Hmm? There's no, again, no real perfect solution. We'll explore it next week. For now, we are just uh, you know, happy of the get uh, functionality. The lab in this week will only require you to do gets. Okay? The more complex stuff will be for next week. Okay, thank you. Now I leave the word to. Uh, our colleague, which is uh, uh, telling us something, some words about that stuff uh, that installed in this um, in this room, and later on I will give you on, on Telegram a link uh, to a questionnaire, but they will uh, she will explain everything about that. So, in qualche modo riuscirò riuscirò a farcela. No, no, no. Ecco di prendi qua.